Hi, my name is Michael, and I'm going to show you how to make RPG-like stats function in your game using my Visual Novel Engine. So, first off, we're going to need to create a dialogue canvas, like in the start of any of your projects using this engine. And let's make some UI elements to ask the player to enter in their character name. So, let's just right-click anywhere in here, and let's make a let's make a small panel. We can just grab a panel there. Um, we don't want it that big. Something, something like that. Okay. Now, on our panel, we're going to add in probably an input field for them to type in, type in their name. And we're also going to add in a button, just a regular old Unity button. Okay. And attach this input field. Let's attach a component called input field to stat. So what this will do is when we call the function it's going to save whatever it is in our input field to a stat and we'll see that in a moment. So let's just add in some make it a bit nicer. And we'll make the button say confirm name. Okay. So when the button's clicked, we're going to want it to do a few different things. Um, one thing we want it to do is to take whatever data is in the input field currently, and we're going to use the input field to stat function. And here we go. And we're going to save our text there into some stat called player name. That should suffice. And we're also going to want to hide, just hide our panel after we're done. So we'll set active to false. We'll just move that out of there. And now, actually, um, we're going to want a conversation as well. So let's just right-click here. We're going to do Create New Conversation. And then we're going to add some dialogue. And we're going to have some mysterious person ask the player for their name. Now, from here, we're going to add in a perform actions node and this is just like what we're doing with the button you can add different actions like in any of these unity actions lists and we're going to have here we're going to activate our panel because off the bat we're actually going to hide our panel so it doesn't show off the bat and now we're going to make another conversation and we're going to call this okay so we're going to have another conversation, and we're going to run this one after we've already got our player name. Uh, don't want an extra conversation. We want just some dialogue. So now that we've got a new conversation, we can have this conversation start when we click the button. A bit confusing, but once we, once we run it, you'll quickly see how that works. Now, let's actually tell the player their name that they entered. And we can do that by using the special syntax that lets us print out stats. So if we just do the S that stands for string and then give the name of our stat, it should print out hello, you know, player name. Welcome to my dungeon, something cheesy like that. So now if we hit play and we make it full screen. Oh, I did forget to actually set the starting conversation to our initial conversation. Don't want to forget that. All right, let's try again. So here we go. He's going to ask us, what is our name? This thing's going to pop up, and I'm going to name myself Grafnar. And we hit confirm. Hello, Grafnar. Welcome to my dungeon. Good stuff. So as you can see, the player name that we saved in our stat, called player name, uh, has been subbed in here. Perfect. So let's go. Let's go a bit further. Maybe we also want to display some stats to the screen, like maybe we're playing some good old D and D or something. So our initial conversation. Actually, let's set up some stats first. Alter stats, and let's set a number, and we're gonna call it strength to fifteen. And let's set a few more things. Um, maybe dexterity. 
a bit lower and intelligence well we'll make our character not all that smart and so can rename these objects if we wish we don't have to but I like doing that keeps it tidy so now off the bat this is our initial conversation it's gonna set these three stats to these different numbers now let's make let's make another panel or something maybe just some text let's just do some text and uh, let's just put it in the top corner here so let's center it a bit um, make it white and along the left let's give it an outline and now let us add a special script set text to stat and so we can just set here the name of the stat we want to retrieve let's say it's gonna be our player name at the top and it's a string stat and we can say if we want to put some text right before it you can say a name and let's do that a few more times one for each one of our stats that we're going to print out so let's just drag it a bit lower here we go it doesn't look the nicest oh well and in this case let's put um, strength was one of our stats and let's put it'll tell us what our strength is same with dexterity and intelligence okay let's just remove that new ugly new text and when we hit play we can now see that this pops up here and ah uh, there we go the problem that it wasn't displaying was that we were actually looking for numbered stats and not string stats. So if we hit play again, we'll now see, there we go, it's now displaying our strength, dexterity, intelligence, and our name is blank right now because we haven't entered our name. So if we enter our name now, let's do Grafnar again, you can see here it shows Grafnar. Okay, good stuff. Let's go even further. Maybe we now want to have some choices based on some stats of some sort. So let's go back to our conversation where he says hello, welcome to my dungeon. Let's just copy that and let's maybe make our player say something. So text from string stat. We don't need an actor right now. We'll just say the stat name is player name and he'll say something like this. Something like that. Okay. Now, let's just fade out or something, have a transition, and let's create another conversation to start. Oh, uh, let's get that out of here. And now let's call this our choices conversation. And let's put some dialogue in this new conversation. And let's also set this conversation to start after our other one's complete. So, I don't know, we'll say something. Something here, maybe. Something silly like that. So, we have a door is going to appear before us. And uh, we're going to have to make some choices about how to deal with that. So let's add in a choices node. And um, let's figure out how the player is going to deal with this door. So our first one maybe could be smash the door with strength. And we can actually make this door have a requirement. Maybe a uh, number requirement of some sort. So we check our strength and it has to be greater than, I don't know, 12 or something. We can have another one that maybe is um, pick the lock on the door. And this would be a dexterity check of some sort. And again, it's going to be a number. And we'll use 12 as well. And uh, maybe 
outsmart the door. And of course, it's just a door, so you're not really going to be able to outsmart it. So we'll just make it impossible and put that here. So we want to do a bit more than that. If we haven't met the requirements, we should probably add some text um, saying why this uh, option is grayed out. So we can say, give the requirements of why, why this check failed. So we're going to set all these to disable button. And it says it's going to require, you know, more than 12 something. Okay, good. Uh, we now want to actually hook up something to happen when the player clicks on these choice buttons. And so you can add events down here. We've seen these before. Um, and we're going to want to create some different conversations just just for the player to do to start if they do you know click on them so we'll have three different conversations smash the door pick the lock and uh, outsmart the door however unlikely that is let's go back to our choices now we can just drag these in let's drag them in one at a time and then on each one we want to tell it to go to the conversation manager class and start the conversation So now, if the user clicks on one of these, these events will happen. It'll start some sort of conversation. So maybe we add some dialogue to each one saying, and of course, maybe we'll actually tell the user what their stat was when they did it. Maybe we'll say something like this. So here I'm going to give an N, which means number, and it's going to sub in our strength stat right here. Okay. Let's add a bit of realism to what we're going through here. So I think we had a fade out to black in this earlier conversation. So let's have a fade in. Let's have a fade in from black to make it look nicer. And maybe during the interval we're gonna hide the UI just to make it look a bit nicer and also let's add in a static image of a door while it's while it's all black so let's look up a door just some image I have place in foreground fade an image no nope, don't need that okay all right let's try that There we go, it's gonna fade out. Hides our UI, here's our nice door. Odin Deer door appears before you. And unfortunately, it looks like our static image is in front of our options, though we can still partially see them. So it looks like these two are grayed out, but I could click the strength one. Looks like my syntax for the stats is slightly wrong. I believe it was actually meant to be F for floating point number. There we go. And we saw how the image was in front of our dialog. We want don't want to place it in the foreground. So here we go. You can now, you know, get through these different choices depending on what your stats were. Um, let's go a bit above and beyond. What if we maybe want to have some sort of random stat check happen? So let's add a bit more dialogue to the smash the door scenario since I gave you the most strength that's probably what you'll do so you hear the click of a trap now let's maybe make let's maybe add in a random number so here we can generate a random number and we can give it say use whole numbers and we'll make it a, I don't know, 1 to 10. So it's going to add 1 to 10 to our strength stat. Uh, maybe dexterity stat, since that makes more sense for jumping out of a way of something. And we're going to save it to a new stat called dexterity check. 
And now we're gonna have some dialogue telling us what happened. And I'll fix a typo as well. And now, based on our result that's now going to be stored in the dexterity check stat, let's add an if node to give us a branch. So, so maybe if our dexterity check is greater than, I don't know, 15, I guess. So I'm just going to copy paste some of this stuff down here. And we want a float stat. So if dexterity check is greater than 14, um, I guess actually we'll say less than less than 15 we're gonna start a new conversation let's create one right here and this will be the you died conversation and let's just grab some dialogue and say something like that so let's drag that in here so if this is met so if our dexterity check is less than 15 Let's start a new conversation, and it's going to be the you died conversation. Let's slightly reorder them to make a bit more sense. And if, you know, we got 15 or greater, we now want to add some dialogue afterwards saying, you know, you got past the trap. Okay. And I don't know, just to show that we're done, let's do have a fade out to black. All right, well, let's, let's take a look at our final product. Okay, there's our door. Now we can see that's still here. You know, only our strength is our only option. I should probably add 15 strength text after that, but that's all right. Looks like we rolled high enough on our dexterity check. You successfully avoided the trap. Avoided the trap. You truly are a hero. We all aspire to be. And that's it. If you noticed when it rolled for that check, um, it actually gave you a weird floating point number, 19.8 something, and actually if you want to just use whole numbers, you'd want to click here to say use whole numbers. Well that about wraps up for RPG stuff. Um, let me know if there's other topics you'd like me to talk about. Uh, thanks for listening.